you guys ready to do power steering? I'm tired of fighting with this old Armstrong steering. Let's go put some power steering in. All right, so today we're we're pulling the motor out and we're not pulling the motor out just to do the power steering. We're pulling the motor out to do the 16 valve swap. Picked up the 16 valve swap yesterday, wiring harness yesterday from a buddy of mine, uh, John, down in Rimby. And he did the wiring harness all up for me. He's done four or five of these 16 valve swaps already. So he knows what he's doing. He's a red seal mechanic. So I paid him to look the motor over do the wiring, which is not my thing. Wiring and me don't go together very good. And uh, so yeah, this whole weekend, there's gonna be, I'll be putting in the power steering. I'll be putting the 16V swap in there, getting everything all back up and running. And we're gonna take her down for a shakedown run somewhere, some trail somewhere. So let's pull this motor. I'm not gonna bother showing it. If you guys are doing motor swaps or stuff like that, you know how to pull a motor. I'm not going to bother showing it. So, and the power steering, I've watched a bunch of videos on YouTube. Most of them are missing stuff. They're not telling you this, they're not telling you that. So I'm going to put a no nonsense power steering mod video, just straight to it, how you do it. Cut here, do this, wire this, wire that. Let's pull this motor. Okay, so I bought this unit off of eBay and this is exactly how it came, all in parts. And uh, from what I gather, this motor gets bolted on here. Uh, this is an extra shaft you can use for, if you want it, that goes in there. This is the ECM for it. And basically, we, all we gotta do is cut this junk free. Just, I think we'll just take a side grinder and we'll just cut this off, pull it free. And then we have our splines, the stuff that we need to make it work. Okay, here it is, plain and simple. Don't bother removing no sir clip from here, from this side here. It's, you don't need it to take it apart. Measure yourself three quarters of an inch from here to here. Draw a line around it. And you just cut it and it just pops apart. It comes out like that. On here is them splines that everybody shows you about. You'll probably want this piece here to weld to your steering shaft. And there you have it. That's your drive side. That's your driven side. Okay, so then all we gotta do is remove our steering shaft. Undo this clamp here. And undo this clamp here. Okay, so the easiest way I found to take this shaft out is just undo the rag joint and then it just pops right out. And this spline section just slips right out. Okay, so what I opted to do here was take the original rag joint uh, mount that goes onto your steering box. I took that off the steering box. I cut this U-joint down and left the splines that attach to the motor, I'll show you cut it down, made it all square, line this up so it's perfectly in line, and I'm gonna weld this. And the reason I'm doing it this way instead of using the rag joint and welding that shaft onto the motor is I don't wanna cook the seals on that motor or anything electrical in it. So I'm opting to go this way. It's like a rag joint eliminator. You don't have that rag joint that could fail. This stuff is gonna turn harder, more force, there's a chance you could tear that rag joint. So that, that's my reasoning. So we're gonna weld this. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I've got this U-joint put together. This 
is onto the steering box as far as it normally goes. This is in here as far as it normally goes. So why couldn't I drill out this U-joint a little bit so that I could stick this shaft a little further into it? So then here's where it is here now. It would go a little, maybe a half inch further into this U-joint here. Because look at how much spline there is still that you're driving with. I mean, there's three inches of spline there that for turning, that should be plenty. And if I plug this into that U-joint and weld it, I mean, that should be solid. That should be plenty, that's all you'd need. And then there's, there's for sure three inches of stroke here to remove it. You just have to undo this bolt and slide this whole assembly or undo this bolt and slide the whole assembly. Like this one here, you only have to slide it three quarters of an inch and it's out and you've got three inches of slide here. I think I'm gonna do that instead of like what the other guys are doing is cutting this and welding in this, the original shaft. I'm just gonna take this U-joint out, drill this hole out a little bit so these splines slide in there. Or I could grind these slides, these splines down so they slip in there. And then just weld it to that U-joint. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here's the finished product. This is the rag joint part that comes off your steering box welded to the U-joint set that this little power steering unit comes with. This is the U-joint that comes out of the firewall from your steering shaft welded straight to the shaft like I had showed how I was going to do it. I've drilled a there's a little half moon in there so I can still put a bolt through there as extra safety measure so this shaft if the weld broke which it won't but if it did, it still can't come out because there will be a bolt in there. So that's good. And you should still have some steering because it won't just let this shaft rotate. And there it is. So we're basically ready to mount it in the Zook, put the motor on, wire up the ECM, and we should try it. And if I wasn't filming this and whatnot, I would say I'm probably about two hours into it. It's actually pretty darn simple. So then I just have to make a bracket off the frame to mount to these probably three bolt holes. I'm gonna use three rather than two. There was already three bolts that come off some of these brackets and stuff. That's already the right size, perfect. So I just have to mount this in the Zook, make a frame mount for this to stay stationary. And there's enough slide in here that you can slide this whole unit assembly back to get either this off or this off to get the whole unit out. So it should be pretty slick. So let's go mount her in the Zook. So now if I've got this figured right, we should be able to slide this up where it's gotta go up in here. There we go. There we go. And there she's in. Okay, so here's the bracket I made frame. This sits on the top of the frame. This goes down the side of the frame. All three bolts in there should be should work pretty solid. But the only torque on this thing is twisting. There's no forward to back torque so I don't think I need to add a gusset or nothing. I'll just weld it across the frame and down the frame and we should be good. So we'll see how it fits. Okay here we go. Here's how it looks. All right, now that she's in place here, we're gonna just try and tap her in here. All right, so we got her all installed here now, nice and solid. It's hooked up to the steering box. That bolt's tight, that bolt's tight. These bolts are darn tight. The mount is all in there. She's solid as can be. 
I got the wires hooked up to the ECM, the wires coming from the motor. They plug into right here, obviously. Um, the little wire from the sensor comes underneath here. It clips in here. Top wire is power. The bottom one is ground to your battery. And the very top left little black wire in here is your switched power. So when you turn your ignition on, power hits that, activates the ECM, and you're live. And I just temporarily wired it down to a battery to test her out. So I'm gonna show you over here on this side and then we'll uh, try and turn it over. So you can see I kind of got a hillbilly wired up. Black red wire coming over the top and the yellow ignition triggered wire coming over the top, <coughs> comes down. Red wire goes to the positive on the battery. Black wire is going to the negative on the battery. And all I have to do to activate it is touch the yellow to the positive and you'll hear it click. And the ECM should be live. All right, so now that the ECM is live, the power steering is live, everything's hooked up to the battery, we should be able to just reach in here and turn it lock to lock. Look at that. Man, that's going to be awesome. Now see the difference. We unhook the ECM. <laughs> that's how it was originally. So you can see how much easier it is with the power steering. And I'm granted that it does turn easier on this plywood here, but on the gravel, it's gonna definitely turn a lot harder. <clears throat> when you're aired down, it's gonna turn even harder. I think that power steering is gonna be the ticket. My idea with this power steering is I'm gonna take that ECM and I'm gonna put it inside the zoo. Just looking at it, it doesn't look like it's meant to get water on it or get submerged at all. So I'm gonna run the wires into the Zook, mount that little ECM somewhere, probably near where the 1.616 valve ECM is gonna be. And then it'll be uh, all good to go. So that concludes the power steering. Simple job. Anybody can do it real simple. Don't need much for fab tools at all. Uh, I thought it was gonna be a lot harder than it was. I procrastinated quite a while for doing it and I wish I wouldn't have, I wish I did a long time ago. But anyhow, it's all done. Next week's video is gonna be the 16B swap and I can't wait for that to see the power difference. So if you guys are enjoying this content I'm putting out, go ahead, subscribe, share, like, hit the bell to be notified. Give me a thumbs up. Look in the description below, you'll see a link to my store. Click on it, go ahead, go in there, pick yourself up a hoodie or a shirt help support the channel here i'll even put a link right here for you guys and if you want to follow me on instagram it's at fabin underscore adventures and we'll catch you guys next friday